Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 21st day of August, 2024. It is Wednesday, and we are in the middle of another week, and today's topic is titled, Interpreting Life Right, and we'll get into that topic here in a little bit. Before all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that is the most important thing you can ever do is trust Jesus, <clears throat> believe on him, and he'll wash away all your sin, give you eternal life, and then the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of you and separates your soul from your uh, flesh. And not sure how that's done, but it's a circumcision made without hands, made by God himself. And then he'll guide you and direct you in all truth as you desire to live for him and do right and live right and have a good relationship with the Lord and uh, relationship with other believers and get into a good Bible-believing ch uh, church and, and be edified by God's Word uh, preached and taught to you and and, uh, and all that and to edify one another and to get along with one another and love one another and uh, if somebody's causing uh, trouble in your church um, and they decide to leave the church for whatever reason um, you're not to fellowship with them and uh, until they get right with the Lord so and uh, just keep praying for them, whoever that may be. And uh, <clears throat> amen. All right. And so, but to keep on keeping on for the Lord. And don't let anybody try to uh, veer you away from uh, serving the Lord. And sometimes you might have to um, keep on serving them uh, no matter what happens. And um, all that. And don't get into gossip or backbiting or tail bearing and all that. Stay away from it. And serve the Lord as best you can. And... Uh, all right, so, and uh, don't cause uh, schisms in the church and all that, so that's uh, something you shouldn't do, <clears throat> and we should be uh, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, and uh, as Brother David taught last uh, Sunday morning, and I encourage you to listen to that, both of those messages there were really good, and then the prayer series from Brother James that he did, the prayer closet series, so good messages there, so... All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into the scripture song um, for today. And this is from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52. And I encourage you to read all of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians on your own time. And it's a good chapter there. It's, uh, I believe, the, um, the beginning of the chapter talks about uh, the gospel and what the gospel is, the death, burial, and resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ and all that. So, but we're going to um, talk here about the... Um, this is talking about the rapture here, uh, when we get caught up um, in the air with the Lord, and who knows, that could happen today, it could happen while I'm in the middle of doing this broadcast, that would be great, but in the meantime, uh, we're to keep preaching the word and telling people about Jesus so they can have an opportunity to be saved also, and know that God is long-suffering and uh, gracious and merciful and not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance, and uh, so they have an opportunity to be saved, so... They don't get uh, left behind and all that, so, amen. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll get into the scripture song now for this 21st day of the month and sing along here with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, Behold, I show you a mystery. We, we shall not, not all sleep, but we shall, shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's right, amen. Behold, behold. Show you a mystery. Behold, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, we shall all be changed in a moment. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. 
we shall be changed in a moment. Behold, behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. We shall be changed in a moment. Amen. <laughs> I like how he does that behold uh, part there. So we are to behold and I like when he does that. Behold! Amen? <laughs> Alright, so we'll do those scripture songs again at the end of the broadcast. Yesterday's and today's again. And put that aside for right now. And we'll get into today's topic for this 21st day of the month, Wednesday, titled Interpreting Life Right. And we have here 1 Thessalonians 2.2. 2. And let's go ahead and let's look at uh, chapter 2, verse 1 here. And get a little bit of context. So, First Thessalonians 2. And go here really quick. <clears throat> Alright, so First Thessalonians 2. Alright, so let's see here. There's 20 verses here. So, alright, so let's go ahead here and um, get into this. So, chapter 2, verse 1 says... For yourselves, brethren, talking to saved people, uh, know our entrance in unto you that it was not in vain. And then verse 2, which is the uh, verse for the topic today, says, But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention, for our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle, uh, gentle among you, even as a nurse charited her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be change, uh, chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Uh, ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe, as ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea, are in Christ Jesus, for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles, that they might be saved to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost, but we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. 
For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Amen. And that's the entirety of chapter 2 from First Thessalonians. <clears throat> and now let's go ahead and get into the topic today. The title again, Interpreting Life Right for this 21st day of August, Wednesday. And again, First Thessalonians 2.2 2 says, But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. And today's author is R.P., that would be the initials for Randy Pike. And let's see, Randy Pike, RP, uh, Randy Pike, he uh, is deceased and he lived in Greenville, South Carolina, but he's with the Lord now. So I'll read you what he wrote on this topic today. And he writes here, Occasionally, I am rebuked into deep shame while reflecting upon the life of Paul and other saints in the Bible, right? So... And uh, that probably goes for all of us. Uh, he writes on here, Most of the time, they had the spiritual insight, gift of discernment, and rare ability to interpret the unannounced calamities in pinging on their uh, lives as ultimately having a divine design. And he puts in parentheses, For the believer who is knowingly living in sin and in willful disobedience, and refuses to follow on with Christ, this may not be so. So take heed of that, believer. If you're knowingly living in sin and, and willful disobedience, and you refuse to follow on with Christ, um, this may not be so with you. So if that's happening to you or me, and uh, speaking to self, if nobody else is listening, uh, uh, preaching to myself. So, And uh, we can all learn from this to... Uh, not uh, live in sin and know that you're living in sin and get rid of it, repent of it and confess it to the Lord and then get rid of it and don't do it anymore and then uh, uh, live right and do right and and uh, as uh, it says here as we're learning today alright, continuing on it says, writing to the Philippian assembly some six years after departing from them, Paul calls to remembrance the suffering he endured while preaching in that Roman colony, and this is what he says here. But I would have, uh, but I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Philippians one twelve, and that's Paul speaking there. <clears throat> one of the shameful things that the apostle endured was being stripped and beaten publicly. And it says, see Acts. 16, 22 through 23. So let's look at Acts 16 really quick. So Acts 16, and I'm sure you know this here. So Acts 16. <clears throat> All right, so 16 and what is it? Uh, 22 through 23. All right, so, so 22 and 23. So here we go. Um, Acts 16. So Let's go ahead and read this in its entirety here, starting in verse 19. And it starts a new paragraph, and I encourage you to read all of chapter 16 to get the entirety of the chapter there. So in verse 19 it says, And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace, <coughs> unto the rulers, and brought them uh, to the magistrates, saying, these men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. So this is what happened after this um, this uh, woman that was uh, possessed with the spirit of divination had met them. And then she was, uh, uh, which brought her masters uh, much gain by soothsaying. And so she was following Paul and, and uh, um, she was crying uh, this out to them. Uh, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation so she was mocking them and all that was going on and then and then um and then that's going on and then um after that happened the they uh, were saying seeing that their uh, gains were gone they were losing money because of what was happening and and that even happens today that we go out in the street and and we preach the gospel and all that and then the the um 
the merchants of the city get all upset because they think that we're causing them to lose business. Well, it's not us that's causing them to lose business. Perhaps uh, they're not in the right location or they're or whatever the case might be, but it's not our fault. <laughs> we're just out there, you know, <clears throat> certain times of the week, and then they get all upset and want us to leave and try to chase us away. So, kind of like what was going on here. So, all right, and then verse 20 continues on. And so, and, uh, and uh, so their uh, masters uh, saw that the hope of their gains were gone, and they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates uh, rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And then we know verse 25 through uh, the rest of the chapter here uh, talks about when they were in the um, jail there and they were uh, singing and all that, and then this earthquake happened, and and loosed all their bands, and then the jailer was scared and was going to kill himself because he knew that if all the prisoners escaped, that it was going to be on his head. And then Paul and Silas had cried uh, there and, and said, Don't do thyself no harm. And, and then he asked them, What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And then and then he ends up believing, and then brings them into the house and, and cleanses their wounds and all that. And so that's all happening there in the rest of the chapter. So, amen. And that's what you must do to be saved is believe on Jesus. All right. So we read that there. And continuing on in the topic here, uh, he writes, I am sure that during the painful beating, Paul saw little, if anything, of God. Uh, he says, when Dr. Uh, Lifko, L-E-F-F-K-O, uh, when Dr. Lifko told me I would never walk again, I can promise you that, in my mind, God was nowhere to be found. And so we tend to doubt God sometimes when things like this happen, and we shouldn't do that, but it tends to happen there. And uh, so he said that, and then continues on here, it says, So often with David, I have knelt in the burnt-out ashes of another of life's uh, zigzags, but unlike him, on these occasions, I often fail to encourage myself in the Lord, my God. And it says, see First Samuel 30, and then 1 and 6 for the meaning of Ziklag. So you can look at that on your own time there. Um, but we won't do that for uh, time uh, constraint there. But I encourage you to go look at First Samuel 30 and uh, 1 verses 1 and 6 for the meaning of Ziklag. So uh, you can do that there. And then he concludes with this. It says, you haven't uh, been there, you say? Just wait a while. So, And uh, hopefully that nothing ever happens to you health-wise or whatever. Um, or, or anything like sorrows or um, discouragement or whatever. But we all go through those times. So, <clears throat> all right. So learn from this lesson here to, uh, to trust God even in those times of uh, pain and sorrow and things that happen in the flesh and all that. So. Amen. All right, so that was a good little topic there. And now let's go ahead and get into today's uh, verse for today. There is no um, topic for today because it's church night. And we're continuing on this weekly topic on ministry. And we have here day 200 is what we're on today, church night. And we have Acts 20:24 20, is the passage there. And I encourage you to read all of Acts in its entirety. Acts 20 in its entirety here. And it says here in verse 24, it says... But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. So that's the verse there. All right. <clears throat> and that's uh, going to be it for uh, the devo devotional reading for today. And now we'll put that aside and grab the hymn book. And we'll do these two hymns, uh, the one um, that's for today, and then do the e extra one there, the one that um, 
was mentioned in yesterday's um, uh, topic from yesterday. So we'll sing that one today as the second hymn. So there was no instrumental for this first one. So this is another one of these, The Ordinances of the Church, a spiritual song. And this is M840 in the book, titled Planted Together as We Read. And this is uh, um, Anna B. Mann, 18th century is when she lived. And this is anonymous also. And then from a uh, this is from a collection of church music, 1849. So there's six stanzas here. And there is a story at the bottom of the... Uh, page. So let's read the stanzas. I'll read the stanzas to you. And uh, if you want to try to look this up, maybe find an instrumental on your own time or have somebody play this for you um, who um, knows how to play uh, piano. All right. So let's see. Stanza one says, Planted together as we read in likeness of his death, I think we must be all agreed that sprinklings something less that sprinklings something less. Stanza two, uh, primitive practice also shows they to the water came. Philip doth with the unit go down in and upon and up again, down in and up again. Stanza three, we do not find a basin sent to bring the water near no Christ our Lord to Jordan went and was baptized there and was baptized there stanza four and Noah's art doth also show as Peter views the thing the way and mode that we should go to be baptized in to be baptized in stanza five both men and women were baptized by scripture we are shown, but not a child of infant size. No, not so much as one. No, not so much as one. Stanza six. <clears throat> and faith is also called for before this act is done. Read Philip and the eunuch. When they to the water come, they to the water come. So that's talking about... Uh, water baptism there, but of course we know again um, that water baptism doesn't save your soul. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved, and then you get baptized, believer's baptism. After you get saved, it's an outward showing that you believed on Jesus to other believers and all that. So I uh, need to understand the difference between uh, the different baptisms there, um, baptism with water and all that, and the baptism of the Spirit, and uh, so... All right, and there's um, quite a few different baptisms in the Bible. So, all right, so it's good to know them and understand them so you don't get tripped up thinking that water baptism can save your soul or keep you saved or whatever. So, <clears throat> all right, so now the story at the bottom of the page. It says here, among Baptist hymn writers in America, Anna B. Man is the first lady known by name. Anna lost three of her nine children in death, another as a runaway, and four more as prodigals. Yet her quill remained faithful in defense of the teaching of Scripture. In addition to multiple hymns about baptism, she scribed booklets and materials in defense of the same. She actively defended the practice of immersion, decrying any form of uh, pedo, uh, pedo baptism and sprinkling so that's baby sprinkling and all that stuff there alright so for, full immersion uh, when you get baptized um, alright so that's uh, the story there and now the references we have stanza 1 is Romans 6 5 Acts 8 38 and Mark 7 13 stanza 2 we have 1 Corinthians 11 1 through 2 Matthew uh, 3.13 and Acts 8.39. Stanza 3 is John 3.23. 1 Peter 3.21 and um, Matthew 3.16. <clears throat> Alright, so let's see, that is that. And then stanza 4 is 1 Peter 3.20 and uh, 1 Peter 3.21. And then stanza 5 we have Acts 8.12. 
and Acts 2.41, and then Acts 18.8, and then stanza 6 is Acts 2.41, Acts 8.36-37, and Acts 8.38. So that is the end of the first hymn there. And now we're going to jump ahead a little bit to hymn 900, titled, It Will Be Worth It All When We See Christ, or When We See Christ is the title here. And uh, this is one of these, the Rapture of the Church hymns, a spiritual song. And this is hymn 900, and we'll uh, be coming to this here uh, down the road a little bit again. So, all right, so this is written by Esther K. Uh, Ruthoy. Uh, R U S T H O I R R R R R and <clears throat> she lived from 1909 to 1962, and so she's the only uh, hymn writer here, and there is no story here uh, for this one, but we'll sing the uh, stanzas here with the instrumental. So good hymn here, and let's go ahead and sing this. <laughs> Of time the day seems long our trials are to bear we're tempted to complain to murmur and despair but Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away all tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Sometimes the sky looks dark. With not a ray of light We're tossed and driven on No human help in sight But there is one in heaven Who knows our deepest care Let Jesus solve your problem just go to Him in prayer. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face all sorrow will erase so bravely run the race till we see Christ life's day will soon be o'er all storms forever past We'll cross the great divide To glory safe at last We'll share the joys of heaven A heart, a home, a crown The tempter will be banished We'll lay our burden down it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. 
life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So go bravely run the race till we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Amen. Great hymn there. I like that hymn, so no story at the bottom here. It says here, uh, 1941, New Spring uh, Publishing, Inc., A-S-C-A-P in the parentheses, admin at capital C-M-G publishing.com. All rights reserved, used by permission. So that's the um, uh, hymn there, and now the references. So we got here stanza one is Psalm 4422. Philippians 2.14 and Revelation 21.4. Stanza 2 is uh, Psalm 30 verse 5, Mark 4.37 and 1 Peter 5.7. And then, excuse me, stanza 3 is Psalm 30 verse 5, 1 Thessalonians 4.17 and Revelation 20.10. And then for the refrain, we have 1 John 3.2, Revelation 21.4 and 1 John 3.2. So that is the end of the second hymn there that we did for today and now let's put this to tomorrow's hymn here all right and we'll do the scripture songs one more time and then we'll wrap it up after that <clears throat> all right so yesterday's scripture song from the 20th is first corinthians fourteen thirty three. so let's uh press play here all right, there we go. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 14.33 For God, God is not, not the author of confusion, confusion but of peace, as, as in all churches of the saints. saints. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints, as in all churches of the saints. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace. <clears throat> now today's one more time, and... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. Right. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I like what he does the behold part here. Behold, behold, I show you a mystery, behold, behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed in a moment, behold. Behold, I 
I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be all be changed in a moment. We shall be changed in a moment. That's right. Amen. That's it. Happens when the uh, rapture takes place. We get caught up in the air to be with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words from First Thessalonians, uh, chapter four. There, the last verses there, thirteen through eighteen. So check those verses out. And uh, so that is it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song, and then the topics for the Baptist bread and this uh, daily strength volume two book, and then the hymns for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the twenty second. And First Thessalonians two nineteen to twenty, and it says here, for what is our hope, or joy, of, or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming, for ye are our glory and joy, Amen. So that's tomorrow's scripture song, and then the Baptist bread topic for tomorrow is going to be titled separation, and that's for Thursday, August twenty second, twenty twenty four. And we have 2 Corinthians 6, 17 is the passage. And tomorrow's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. And he's the one that puts these uh, devotionals together and all that. And these different men that write these devotionals each day. Uh, so that's tomorrow's author. And so that's the, from the Baptist Bread and then the Daily Strength, Volume 2 book. As we're continuing through this topic of ministry this week. And we come to Day 201 for tomorrow. And this is Thursday, titled, The Ministry of Reconciliation. And the passage is 2 Corinthians 5.18. And then the hymn for tomorrow is uh, titled, Tell Me the Old, Old Story. And that's a good hymn there. So that'll be the second hymn that we sing. And so that's from the Daily Strength, Volume 2 book. And then the first hymn for tomorrow is titled, Hast Thou Said, Exalted Jesus. And this is the... A hymn for tomorrow, another one of these is the Ordinances of the Church Hymns, a spiritual song, hymn 841 in the book, written by John E. Giles, and then uh, Puri M. F. D. Uh, D. Sales uh, Bailot, B. A. I. L. L. O. T. So, and then arranged by Lowell Mason, and there is a story for this one here, so. Amen. And there's six stanzas here, so hopefully we can find an instrumental for this one, for the first one tomorrow. If not, we'll just do the second one and read you the stanzas here for the first one. So, uh, so that's the cover of the book, the one I've been using here. This is the dark blue cover, and there's also a lighter bluish grayish cover, and then there's a brown cover for the hymn books there, and there's also a leather bound edition, and then this spinal edition here. I think this is still available there. That's the spinal edition where they replace this uh, backing with this type of backing. This would be the side backing normally, and it would be replaced with this type of backing if you like that uh, type of backing there. If you want to get a copy of each one of these, one of each, um, whatever you prefer. So that's um, the different ways you can get the hymn book there. And then the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. This is written by Brother uh, Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray, and they're the authors of this book here, and there's four volumes to this series of books, uh, Daily Strength uh, series uh, here, and uh, I encourage you to get uh, those there if you like to hear uh, good devotionals uh, there, and you can read, th read those, and those are all available on MelodyPublications.com is the website there to get those books, and then the Scripture Song book and CDs, you should be able to get those online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. And uh, they won't be able to go back there full-time, um, but uh, hopefully they'll be able to do um, traveling there back and forth as Brother Dean's health will allow them to. And I believe they're out traveling around the U.S., uh, going to different churches that support them and uh, making visits there and traveling around and doing ministry here in the States. So pray for them as they travel for safe travel and all that and uh so that's um, the information there that's the front of the cover and then the back shows all the covers of all the cds for each month and then also the favorites down here at the bottom 
So you can go get that off the website there and check out their website and see what they do and uh, continue to pray for that mission work to continue over there in Guyana and Port Kaituma. And then there's also the um, CPECs are over there. Uh, Robert CPEC and his uh, wife are over there. Uh, I think they're in Georgetown uh, doing mission work over there. So pray for them also. And so that's that information. And then the Baptist Bread um, book. This is the cover from last month. And this month, and if you order now, you'll get the one for uh, September and October. And I did call and find out what was going on. And they said that they had just gotten the new printer in, the new um, printer to do the, the printing for the Baptist bread. And they said that they got a little behind and they're trying to get caught up. And they're going to hopefully be able to send these out uh, before the end of the month. So it might be a little late uh, getting these. So I'm hoping not. I'm hoping I can get a box before the end of the, uh, the month. And they said if not, that... They'll try to post some of the um, early ones up on their Facebook page. So hopefully I can try to get those early ones so I can keep um, doing the Baptist bread. And I'm going to keep doing it. And I might not be able to read the uh, ones for the few first few days of the month. But I'll um, get caught up and I'll continue reading through the Daily Strength uh, book and all that until I get the until I get the one for September and October. So uh, they said to be in prayer for them that they can get this uh um, all these uh, Baptist bread booklets print, uh, printed and out in the mail quickly so that people can get them before the end of the month. So pray, pray to that end and all that. So amen. And that's uh, BaptistBread.com or www.TimGreenMinistries.org is the second website. And there's other books available on that website. And you can check out that uh, for those books there. And then for Brother Green's ministry, what he does for the Lord and all that so that's the second website there and then the Bible the King James Bible the Word of God this is the first book we need to be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and searching the scripture and going to God in prayer and seeking his face and asking him to guide you and direct you in all truth and to have a good relationship with him and other believers and get into excuse me a good Bible believing church and all that so that's also important there and to grow in the faith and not to stay where you're at so all right so that's that uh um, there the bible and then also the other book i've been reading on a different broadcast the book of genesis part of the christ honoring commentary series by brother james uh, knox and he's the pastor of the bible baptist church in deland florida and you can find most of his books online at www jameswnox.org or go straight to the store part of the website which is store.jameswnox.org and look up his books there this one's not in print right now but you can get a pdf file of it and you can probably contact the church to find out how to do that and i'm sure they'll send you a copy of that through email um so electronic mail there and uh, or you can probably find a used copy of this book somewhere out there and it'll be reprinted here soon and it'll be a chapter by chapter verse by verse commentary where this one was a devotional type of commentary the only one that he's ever done in this format and we've come to this 21st day of august and the topic for the day is notes on genesis 35 so that's already up on facebook and i'll be uploading it on to youtube here in a little bit after i'm done with this broadcast so there's good topics here good notes here on genesis 35 so that's today's uh topic and it's on page 301 and 302 of the book. If you have a copy of this book here, this is the second printing. So that's uh, that book. And there's also preaching and teaching from God's Word on the uh, website there. And then the YouTube channel is James Knox Sermon's YouTube channel. That's the, where you can find the video versions of the preaching and teaching of God's Word. And then the radio broadcast, the video versions of that, uh, where he's been going through the book of James. And then Brother David's been going through the book of James also. So um, you get two different viewpoints of, of that book there. And so good stuff uh, there from Brother James and Brother David through the book of James. And then starting um, this upcoming Sunday, he'll be starting in the book of Hebrews. And he'll probably be that in that book for quite a long time, he said, because he said he has... Just as many notes, if not more, from that book than he did with the book of he, uh, Romans. And we know how long he was in Romans, for almost two years or two and a half years. And so that was really extensive stuff, but good stuff there to learn 
and then he's got uh, volume one of Romans out uh, now. Um, and again, you can find that on the church website there, volume one. And he said there's going to be four volumes to that series of books and very good stuff in there. So, amen. All right, and that's the newest book that's out right now. And uh, so that's that information. And uh, if you want to uh, find the, the older versions, um, the o older videos, I should say, from the book of Genesis and the Baptist bread, you can go straight to the YouTube channel. Uh, that I have, and that's Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting, or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast, and look me up that way, and like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell, so you can uh, know when I'm posting these up uh, on that uh, YouTube channel there, and you can like and uh, share these with others uh, that want to learn God's Word, family and friends, and all that, so, amen. Alright, so that's about it for today, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.